Hi folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be setting up and talking a bit about the pros and cons of this Magello Studio palette that I showed in a recent art haul video. This large palette holds up to 55 different watercolours, so there's plenty of room to fit in all your favourite colours. I'm going to be filling it with the 36 Magello Mission Gold watercolours I have in tubes, as well as adding in a few extras that I bought open stock. Now there are lots of videos here on YouTube for setting up your watercolour palette, but in this video I'll also show you how I prepare my palette, share with you a bit of the colour swatching and talk you through how I choose to arrange the paints in the palette. I've also got a few tips on how to best fill your wells before finally showing you the useful chart I made to display all the product characteristics and properties of each watercolour so I can get to know them better. So if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here please consider subscribing to my channel where I make videos twice a week on all things art related. So with all that said let's get on and prep this palette and for this I'm using a tube of toothpaste. So the idea of applying toothpaste to your new palette is basically to rough up the surface a bit which it said can prevent your watercolour paint from beading on the palette. Beading is where you get drops of water or paint separating out on the surface and can make mixing watercolours a bit tricky. You can also use a scour or similar and in case you were wondering, no I've never tried this before but I'm curious to see if it will work. So to test if it does work I only applied toothpaste to the lower right hand section of the palette to start with so we can make a side by side comparison. And as you can see close up the watercolour paint lays down easily. On the left hand side however, when no toothpaste was applied, the paint doesn't lay down as well and you do get the beading I mentioned earlier. So with that I decided to prep the rest of my palette in the same way, making sure to wipe all traces of toothpaste off after I'd finished so it wouldn't contaminate my paints later on. Now I'm going to make some simple swatch strips to test out my watercolours on and for this I've cut up some watercolour paper and divided it into sections, one for each of the colours I have. I then used a waterproof pen to write down each of the colour names on the left hand side of each section. It doesn't much matter which order they are in at this stage since I'll be cutting them up to organise them later on. Each of the strips, once swatched and cut out, will fit into the wells of the palette, which I thought would help me to see how it would all look once completed. But this is just the way I chose to do it, which, although I enjoyed, was a pretty time-consuming process, so feel free to adapt this method to fit in with your own requirements. With all that done, it was time to swatch out the watercolours and to save waste I just applied a tiny amount of neat paint from the tube before adding a bit of water to the paper to try and show the value range of each colour and how they mixed with water. I haven't used these Mission Gold watercolours for quite a while so it was really nice to try them out again, re-familiarise myself with the range of colours I have and organise them in this palette so it's all ready to go when inspiration strikes. So Mission Gold watercolours are handmade and designed to mirror the pure, rich colours from nature. They use high quality pigments to achieve high colour intensity and brilliance and disperse quickly and evenly in water, owing to the lack of thickener. There are 105 individual colours available and they are created with only non-toxic and non-chemical additives, so are cadmium and formaldehyde free. With the swatches dry I cut them out so I could begin to arrange them into hues and start planning out where they would go in my palette. So obviously there are lots of different ways you can arrange your watercolours and there's no right or wrong way, so it's really up to personal preference. Some people prefer to go for the traditional rainbow colour order, whilst others might opt to separate their colours out according to the temperature, transparency or staining properties of the paint. But that's the great thing about creating your own watercolour palette. You choose the paints and set them out to fit your individual needs. I chose to place my yellows, oranges and earth tones on the left hand side and put my greens and blues on the bottom right. Above the blues I put the pinks and purples and right at the top I separated out my black, neutral tint and indigo. I then set out the watercolour tubes following this order and I was ready to start filling the wells. And to make sure I don't get any air bubbles as I'm filling my wells up and to ensure paint goes right into the corners, I'm going to use cocktail sticks to stir each colour once it's been squeezed out. Air bubbles and gaps can make your paint more prone to cracking which can be a bit frustrating. 
I'm also deliberately not going to completely fill my pans, especially with colours I'm likely to use less often like this Chinese white. These wells are pretty big too, so half filling them will give me more than enough paint as well as give me some space in each well to add water again once they're dry. So my method for filling each well was to squeeze the watercolour tube into one of the corners until I got enough paint and then to mix the paint with a cocktail stick to get an even consistency as well as fill in those gaps and disperse any air bubbles. As I filled each well I removed the swatch cards keeping them in the same order so I could easily make a colour insert for my palette and not get my colour names muddled up. And whilst I'm finishing this let's just talk a bit about this Magello bulletproof palette. So as you may have guessed despite the name it is not made of bulletproof glass rather the same very strong, shockproof and non-porous material used in bulletproof glass. This palette is pure white inside which allows for true colour representation when mixing colours and it also has the advantage of a unique designated recess for loading and wiping broader flat brushes and I'm looking forward to trying this out. The large size of this palette could be seen as both an advantage and a disadvantage. When closed it measures 8.9 inches times 14.25 inches and when open measures a whopping 14.25 inches times 17.8 inches which is great if you've got a large desk but it's not the sort of thing you'd pop in your bag or take travelling with you. It does feel like a good solid palette but you still in my opinion can't beat mixing watercolour on a porcelain palette. That said its large size does give you the freedom to use larger brushes and mix larger quantities of watercolour compared with a standard or smaller size palette. If you've got one of these yourself, let me know in the comments how you found it and what your overall opinion is, as I'd love to know. Right, on to the next step and that is to create a quick colour swatch guide for the inside of the palette and for this I just cut out some simple rectangles on watercolour paper to fit inside the mixing area. I like to do this because although it's easy to see what some colours are, a lot of the finely ground concentrated pigments appear very dark in the wells, so this simple guide will help me to see clearly what's what. I didn't worry too much about making this super neat either as the shape of the palette made it a bit difficult to get much space for the colours in the corners, so I just did a quick swatch freehand alongside each colour as best I could. Now something I do like about this Magello palette is that I still have quite a lot of space to add in other colours or brands if I want to, but as it is the gaps I left enabled me to separate out colours like the white for example. I don't use this much but having it apart from the other colours means it has a better chance of staying white and not being contaminated by any neighbouring colours. The same goes for the black, neutral tint and indigo on the other side. I do use neutral tint and indigo quite a lot in my paintings. So I like that they have a separate section on my palette and will be easy to find. Now during the swatching process, both whilst doing this insert as well as the initial swatches at the beginning, there are a few colours that came in the 36 set that I'm not too fond of, like the yellow ochre for example. But once I get to know what I like as an alternative, I can replace these or add in more. On the whole though, I really like the vibrancy of these watercolours and they do seem to flow really nicely on the paper. So that's pretty much it for the palette setup, but there's just one more chart I wanted to make using the cut up swatches I made earlier. Now I've seen other artists on YouTube talk a lot about different pigments and properties of various watercolours and this is an area where my knowledge is pretty limited at the moment but I'm really keen to learn more as not only is it interesting but it may also help me to choose the right colour for a painting if I have a better understanding of the paints and pigments themselves. This chart details all the pigments in each colour as well as give me information on the transparency, light fastness and tells me whether or not the colour is likely to stain. An interesting thing I did notice here was that the indigo looked more like Payne's Grey and the Payne's Grey definitely appeared as more of an indigo, which was why I switched them round when setting out my palette. 
Actually, looking at the pigments, it was the Payne's Grey in this set that had the PV19 or violet pigment in, whereas the indigo had just PBK or black pigments in it, which was a bit confusing. So I have a long way to go so far as learning all about this side of things, but I'm having fun and that's the main thing. It was good to see that a large majority of the Magello watercolours have a 4 or 5 star light fastness rating, with only the bright opera and the bright clear violet coming in with 2 stars. Another thing I noticed, so far as pigments are concerned, is that there aren't that many single pigment colours, which is a bit of a shame as it means that they aren't as pure as some watercolours, which I'm guessing might make colour mixing more of a challenge, but I guess time will tell on that one. One final tip I can give you though is that Magello Mission Gold paints will take a few days to dry, so don't close up your palette straight away or you'll end up with a big old mess. But that's it for today and for today's video, I hope you've enjoyed it, if you did please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell icon as well if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to pop them below. I love hearing from you and do read and respond to all of them. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!